welcome back to Inside Gaming, everyone. I'm Evan Campbell, and we've been on holiday break for a couple of weeks, but now we're back. So let's round up this week's biggest video game news. If you've been anticipating the release of a Switch Pro or Switch 2 sometime in 2023, well, it looks like you may be waiting a whole nother year. That's according to multiple industry sources, but primarily Digital Foundry's John Linneman, who said on the DF podcast over the break that fans shouldn't expect a Switch Pro or half-step version of the console at all. Specifically, Linneman said, Internally, from what I can understand from talking to different developers is that there was some sort of mid-generation switch update planned at one point and that is seems to no longer be happening and thus it's pretty clear that whatever they do next is going to be the actual next generation hardware uh, i don't think it's going to be 2023 um and I think Nintendo itself is probably likely very nervous about this transition. So there you go. Likely no Switch Pro in development at all. And Nintendo's next big hardware announcement should be announcing their next generation of hardware entirely. The cast of the Digital Foundry Direct podcast went on to describe the challenges Nintendo has had in the past with transitioning from very successful hardware generations to utterly flailing ones, like from the Wii to the Wii U. But then they also concluded by saying, whatever Nintendo comes up with should be a huge improvement over the current hardware with at least double the processing power. That's primarily because while the innards of the Switch were state of the art way back in 2015, it's been completely overshadowed by newer and much faster chipsets recently with more cores, better RAM, and integrated software advancements like DLSS, which could allow the next version of the Switch to potentially play only slightly modified versions of current gen games. The current iteration of the Switch has been showing its age for a while now, and with Steam Deck kind of picking up the slack in the interim, it kind of sucks that Nintendo fans are going to have to wait another year before a hardware refresh comes their way. In response to John Linneman's comments on the Digital Foundry podcast, another reputable reporter, Andy Robinson, who owns VGC and is an editor there, tweeted out, From what I'm hearing, I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo starts talking about new hardware by 2024. I'm not convinced another huge first-party game other than Zelda is left on Switch. Usual Nintendo prediction caveats apply meaning it's hard to guess what they're going to do. This isn't an entirely new sentiment. Christopher Dring over at GamesIndustry.biz tweeted back in November about Nintendo's 2023 lineup as well. Given the rough launch for Pokemon's ninth generation games, Dring was pondering why Nintendo didn't postpone the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet until holiday 2023, this year, considering they reportedly don't have any other major releases in the works. Dring tweeted, there will be a good reason why they didn't, but if what I hear is true about Nintendo's post Zelda lineup, there isn't one. Those games could play a key role next year, meaning 2023. When questioned about the lineup, Dring clarified, I have heard that after Zelda, Nintendo doesn't have a significant game for quite some time. Now that tweet alone made a few headlines just because a number of reporters were quick to corroborate that they've heard similar things about Nintendo's 2023 lineup, but there was some argument over the semantics behind the word significant. If you remember, last year Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubb had heard from a trusted source that the Metroid Prime series remasters would be announced and released before the end of 2022. Unfortunately for all, it appears Nintendo's plans changed and Grubb actually ended up losing his hair over it. Basically, Grubb said he would cut his hair if the games didn't get announced because he was so confident about that happening. But, you know, you can't really bet on Nintendo. You never know what they're going to do. Now, new rumors have surfaced about the remasters and fans are also awaiting any news on Metroid Prime 4, you know, which could be larger titles. Pikmin 4 is also slated for some time in 2023. But both that franchise and Metroid, while iconic, aren't historically top sellers for Nintendo. Metroid Dread, I think, is the best-selling Metroid game of all time. And I think last year there was a report that said it had only sold about 3 million copies. I think that was in the, the spring or something. Lastly, there were rumors way back in 2021 that the Mario Odyssey team was actually working on a new 2D slash 2.5D Donkey Kong game since Retro was busy. I'm willing to guess that's in addition to some type of flagship Mario title, but with Nintendo, it's always, always hard to say. In addition, if the new rumors about the next iteration of the Switch not coming out until at least 2024 are true, you have to imagine Nintendo will want to hold on to their heaviest hitters 
for the launch lineup, therefore causing that big gap between when Zelda Tears of the Kingdom comes out on May 12th this year and March next year, when many are predicting a Switch 2 would likely drop. Patrick Klepek over at Vice has also been saying for a while that Nintendo has been doing this thing where they actually finish games and then they kind of just sit on them. That's also what sort of happened with Metroid Dread. So they might have a couple of pocket games to, to pull out in 2023, but it sounds like there won't be any major, major titles for them. Honestly though, Nintendo is so secretive. By the end of next month, they could already have presented a Direct, which announces some major title coming out this year, or, you know, even like Switch 2, Holiday 2023. I don't think that's likely, but I wouldn't be surprised if it would happen. I, I guess it would be a nice surprise if that happened, but yeah, again, it just, it doesn't seem likely. All right, let's move on. The Last of Us has been in the news a ton lately, mostly due to some ridiculous comments from Craig Masson, the showrunner on the HBO show adaption of the first game, but there are some legitimate updates as well. On January 4th, Naughty Dog posted an official blog stating The Last of Us will celebrate a 10 year anniversary in June, and also noted that the franchise has sold 37 million copies globally as of December 2022. The PC version of The Last of Us Part 1 is coming March 1st, and there was also promises of new updates to come throughout the year, including more details on The Last of Us multiplayer project, also known as Factions. On the same day as the blog post, The Hollywood Reporter posted an interview with Naughty Dog creative director Neil Druckmann, who teased The Last of Us 3, saying, I think there's more story to tell. As of spring 2021, it was confirmed that The Last of Us 3 was not in development, but that doesn't mean it won't happen or hasn't fired up since then. However, there have also been rumors about Naughty Dog spinning up a new IP, and the timing kind of seems about right. So maybe that comes first and then we get The Last of Us 3 after that. I know you all enjoy a good disaster story on this channel, so buckle up because this one is a doozy. You will probably not be surprised to hear that Madden 23 is still very much on fire. The game had an incredibly rocky launch with tons of bugs and issues, but now things have really escalated for Madden players. Over the break, players who logged on between December 28th and December 29th encountered a major bug, which more likely than not, corrupted all of their franchise mode data, likely due to server issues at EA. In an update on the situation, EA wrote, first off, we are sorry that this happened. We know how important your franchises are to you and we are actively working on a fix to restore some files via a backup as soon as possible. However, not all leagues can be restored. The team is currently projecting around 40% of leagues to be recovered. Quick math, that means 60% of the files affected will not be recovered. That's over half. Oof. If you are not familiar, franchise is a mode in Madden where players spend dozens of hours, maybe hundreds, managing teams over multiple seasons in a long sort of campaign, which becomes a very personalized narrative over time. Look, I know some of us don't play sports games, but you still gotta pour one out for all of those lost saves. That really, really sucks. All right, in the name of time, I'm about to do a very disrespectful recap of CES 2023. So if you are a tech-oriented person who cares a lot about the details, just put your earmuffs on for a minute. Basically, if you aren't in the market for a new gaming laptop or interested in cloud gaming, you didn't really miss much. If you are interested in those things, I recommend checking out a more formal recap of the NVIDIA and AMD news from the show, but GeForce Now subscribers will now have access to virtual machines running RTX 4080s. 40 series laptops are also coming this year Alienware has some flashy new hardware too, mainly, again, just gaming laptops. Some more games are getting DLSS3 support, which is nice. And on the AMD side, there's some very exciting laptop and desktop GPU news in that they are really looking to compete and overtake with just pure processing power and AI integrated chips. But, you know, we usually don't get too into the weeds on tech specs and details on this channel. Just know some very, very cool gaming laptops will be available in the coming months, and AMD is really, really swinging for the fences. Sony showed off the PSVR 2 a little, saying there will be 30 games at launch, and then they also revealed a new accessibility controller called the Leonardo Project, which is rad, but no new trailers or news for upcoming games. It feels weird to me that PlayStation, like Sony's like, we're not gonna do E3 or Summer Games Fest or be involved with any of that, or even do our own showcase for 2022. But, you know, we'll show up at CES. That seems like a, a cool show to announce video game things. Sure, why not? That's pretty much what I got from the show. So if you want to add something or like skewer me in the comments or something, just go for it. It's fine. I don't mind. And finally, our last story for the week, 
Microsoft is still battling to make progress on their plans to acquire Activision Blizzard. When we left off on this story last time, the FTC had filed a lawsuit to block the acquisition and Microsoft basically said they were confident about their case. And boy, are they really confident. In an official response to the FTC lawsuit, Microsoft and Activision's lawyers really went for the jugular, calling out both the FTC and Sony, basically arguing that after the acquisition, Call of Duty would be more accessible to more players and for less money via services like Game Pass and xCloud. Microsoft added that their focus on the king portion of the Activision Blizzard acquisition would help them further increase competition in the mobile gaming space, which would in turn generate more revenue, which Microsoft intends to use to make more innovative gaming technologies. More pointedly, they wrote, the FTC's disregard for these benefits to consumers and focus on supposed harms to Xbox's deep pocketed competitors betrays a fundamental disconnect between the FTC's theories and the antitrust law's underlying purpose, which is to protect competition not competitors. The FTC is asking this court to protect the world's largest gaming companies from further competition from Xbox and thereby turning antitrust on its head. <laughs> and they went on, blinded by ideological skepticism of high value technology deals and by complaints from competitors, by Sony, the FTC has not only lost sight of the realities of the intensely competitive gaming industry, but also the guiding principles of our nation's antitrust laws. Going even further, Microsoft and Activision have claimed that the FTC's approach to the merger is unconstitutional because it violates their Fifth Amendment rights to equal protection and procedural due process. As for Microsoft's progress elsewhere in the world, the country of Chile has approved the acquisition. However, the Competition and Markets Authority, a UK regulator whose approval Microsoft will need for the deal to go through, was supposed to reveal their final decision on the acquisition this March, but they have now extended their investigation to the end of April. So on one hand, I think it's really good that regulators are taking this acquisition seriously. They're doing their due diligence, trying to find out what the potential ramifications could be in the future for such a large uh, you know, purchase of another company. Uh, but on the other hand, it's pretty clear that the FTC has a large lack of understanding about how the games industry works and how things are moving. So that's overall probably gonna give them a much weaker foot to kind of argue that this acquisition shouldn't happen. All right, let's take a look in the comments. Last week we were out, but you know, we put together a holiday episode kind of listing our most anticipated games for 2023. Uh, and y'all did a great job of kind of highlighting some of the games we missed. Boulder's Gate 3, um, Hogwarts, there was a lot of Harry Potter fans in the comments. I saw uh, one comment for Lies of P and one for Atomic Heart. Those are games people should definitely have on the lookout. You know, we didn't exclude these games out of spite or whatever, uh, you know, I kind of just took a general temperature of the water and, uh, you know, kind of ranked a list and then tried to make the video uh, as short and to the point as possible. So that's where we ended up there. However, there was one comment that did make me laugh about one of my most anticipated games. This one came from Nekoni who said, for Silk Song, we are expecting an instant masterpiece with incredible content and endless replayability. Also, it cures cancer and folds your laundry. No pressure though. And that's the way of it sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes we can over anticipate things. We set our expectations way too high and that can lead to disappointment for what is you know, usually a pretty great game otherwise. And so this year, I think we should go into these bigger titles with some amount of measured expectations leveled by what we've actually seen of these games in terms of gameplay. I'm looking directly into your soul right now, Zelda fans, just directly. All right, it's time to talk about new releases coming this week. Flash Party is a multi-platform fighting game that is free to play. Choose from over 20 distinctive heroes with online and offline matches, various modes, themed seasons, and competitive pinnacle arena. Flash Party is coming to PC January 10th. Children of Silent Town is a dark adventure game that tells the story of Lucy, a girl growing up in a village deep in a forest inhabited by monsters. People disappearing is nothing uncommon here, but this time, Lucy is old enough to investigate on her own, or so she thinks. Children of Silent Town is coming to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch 
on January 11th. Kart Rider Drift is the fun free-to-play cross-platform kart racing game where arcade thrills and fast drift fueled competition meet customized carts and character personalization. Kart Rider Drift is coming to PC, iOS, and Android January 11th. Chondria, explore a ruined open world of caverns and settlements. Hack and slash your way through missions, patrol, repair, scavenge, choose your quests and dialogue, or go fishing. Forage mushrooms and race the clock. The old world is gone, the future is upon you. Chondria comes to PC January 11th. Gatewalkers is a cooperative action RPG where players travel across different worlds in order to save their own. Explore, procedurally generated worlds, face hostile inhabitants, face challenges like extreme weather conditions, toxic atmosphere, lack of water, and more. Gatewalkers is coming to PC January 12th. Lone Ruin. Venture into an old magical ruin to seek an ancient power in this highly replayable roguelike twin stick shooter. Okay, this seems okay. Optimize spells and build ultimate combos to defeat twisted monstrosities and delve deeper into the Lone Ruin. Lone Ruin is coming to Switch and PC on January 12th. Rogue AI Simulator. Play as a rogue artificial intelligence. Your prime directive is simple. Design a facility and manage human test subjects for Department of Science. But be careful, we never stop being suspicious of you. Rogue AI Simulator is coming to PC January 12th. Terror of Hemosaurus is a retro city smash em up with satisfying destruction physics. Play as a giant monster unleashing terror upon mankind in this modern arcade experience with the action turned up to 11 probably a Spinal Tap reference there. Terror of Hemosaurus comes to Switch January 12th. Vengeful Guardian Moonrider is a side-scrolling action platformer that channels the golden age of classic 16-bit action games in a full throttle quest for revenge. Created to defend a totalitarian state, the Moonrider rejects its programming and now seeks vengeance on its creators. Vengeful Guardian Moonrider comes to PC, PS4, and Switch on January 12th. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Bardock Dash Alone Against Fate DLC. Experience the story of Goku's father, Bardock, who fought alone against his fate in this new story arc. The DLC includes new story arc, new super attacks, new soul emblems, and others. Will you be ready to defend the Saiyans? Dragon Ball Z, Kakarot, Bardock, Dash Alone Against Fate DLC is coming to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on January 13th. And finally, One Piece Odyssey, a brand new RPG set in the world of the popular anime, One Piece. Play as members of the Straw Hat crew in a fantastic adventure set in the One Piece world. I think they already said that, but One Piece Odyssey comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and PS4 on January 13th. All right, that's gonna do it for the news. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome weekend, and we'll catch you next week. Later.